through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 264. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're gonna give you our DVD rundown for the week of June 18th. Flying right along. We are officially uh, two weeks away from being halfway done with the year. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't even realize. <laughs> All right, I'll go with that. Cool. It's also uh, fa what um, Father's Day just happened. Yes, it did. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we get a little uh, belated Father's Day mm -hmm, gift, perhaps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we're gonna start with some interesting ones. First up, one that I think was an underappreciated film to come out earlier this year, and that is Jack the Giant Slayer. Mm -hmm. It says Brian Singer directed, starring was it Nicholas Holt, uh, Stanley Tucci, Ian McShane, mm -hmm. Bill Nighy. Mm -hmm, you know, a good mm -hmm. group of people about a. It's essentially the Jack and the Beanstalk story, yes. except Jack, it's an action version yes. of it where yes. <laughs> Jack has to climb up the beanstalk and save a princess. Mm -hmm. so. And there's an army attacking giants rather than just the beanstalk. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty giant Or giants and against an army. Uh, I think inspired by, was it Jack the Giant Killer from back yes. in like 1962? So it's mm -hmm. 50 years later that they're... It's crazy. Yeah, I can't, it's hard to imagine that, but it's, hmm. it's, it's kind of a fun idea. Singer's done so few things, it's kind of sad when he does stuff that yeah. it's not hugely received. Yeah, well, it's got kind of a couple of them. You know, Superman yeah. Returns is there, too. Ooh. We'll see if we'll get back on the uh, track with uh, X-Men Days of Future Past. Yes. Probably one of the reasons why he agreed to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the film was not largely enjoyed. I thought it was a fun, sort of adventurous, sort of romp. Uh, sadly, most people disagree with that. I'd say give it a chance. It's definitely worth checking out. But it does have Owen McGregor saying, I have a bad feeling about this. It does, which yes. Is, which is good. <laughs> uh, and it comes in a nice sort of complete pack with a Blu-ray 3D, Blu-ray, DVD, and ultraviolet copy all together, which we is love cool. That. In terms of featurettes, apparently it's kind of lacking. It's got, you know, deleted scenes, gag reel. Mm. And then it's got a whole bunch of, you know, little featurettes like, no, your enemy, suit up, suiting up at uh, attack Tactics, okay. the magic of the beanstalk, giant's kitchen, blah blah blah. But apparently, it's through such like a convoluted system of menus that you have to like climb up a beanstalk in it. It's I very see. sort of kid oriented that it kind of ruins all of it. So the gotcha. release itself is kind of unfortunately poor. That's too bad. No commentaries, as far as I can tell, or anything of that sort, which is really a bummer because I'd be very interested in hearing Brian Singer yeah, talk like about it. Yeah, what made him be inspired It's so very be much a director. passion project yeah. of his. So. Yeah, because he's been pushing for it for a while, years, right? I think yeah. it was one of those ones that had reshoots and mm -hmm. redone. He's been working on it for years. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's unfortunate and it's sort of a bummer that most of it is just sort of like, you know, run of the mill Special content. effects yeah. fluff piece. Yeah, so it's, it's not great, but I would I would rent the film and give it a try. I'll probably be getting here at Scarecrow. Check it out. Because I wanted to see it. I missed it when it was in theaters. Yeah, so. I, I would recommend giving it a try. Um, next up, we're going to talk about a sort of <laughs> curious release that mm -hmm. came out earlier this year, and that is Stoker. Yes. This is uh, directed by Chanwook Park, who yes. did the Vengeance trilogy. Mm -hmm. was it, this uh, is his first English movie. Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, Old Boy, and uh, Sympathy for Lady Vengeance. Vengeance, yes. Um, yeah, very, very popular foreign filmmaker yes. who was making his debut. And of course, there's a study about a girl whose father dies, and then her uncle comes mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> her mother gets involved with him mm -hmm. she sort of finds him mysterious and charming but with ulterior motives but she still finds an infatuation with yes. him it's kind of a weird it's, crazy plot there's a reason it was on uh, 2010's blacklisted screenplays which are like the most unfilmable screenplays i think it's the the, the, the most desired most but, uh, yeah. yeah yet to be made yes, screenplays yeah. that's right and, sorry i don't know <laughs> I don't know, read that plot, I'm not entirely sure why that is. I mean, it's got some good actors in it, you know. Um, Mia Wozikowski, mm -hmm. Nicole Matthew Kidman. Good. Yeah, a whole bunch of good people, but you know, eh, sort of a weird, sort yeah. of crazy idea. I think this hit the, like, more of the indie circuit, right? I don't know if it was um, necessarily that huge of a release. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know if it was a huge, I think it, I mean, I think it was like a standard wide release, but okay. I don't think it was ever like a massive hit or anything. Uh, I mean, you can get it on Blu-ray, Ultra, an ultraviolet or DVD, I believe, without hmm. the ultraviolet. Uh, I mean, you know, the special feature is kind of minimal at best, like deleted scenes, a few behind the scenes of the mysterious characters designing the look and creating the music, uh, which are available also on the DVD. But okay. then the Blu-ray specifically has an exclusive look at the filmmaker's journey and the red carpet premiere, Emily mm. Wells' performance of Becomes the Color. 
I'd be interested to see, you know, what Chang Wu Park had to say, but I don't know. Yeah, that's about, not there. You're not yeah. going to get that. Yeah. yeah. So, like, what made him decide to make an American movie? And was, why would this be the one that why, you would Yeah, do? why was this his choice? What, you know? I mean, I guess it has some sort of, like, you know, uh, the Vengeance trilogy has themes like, you know, revenge, violence, mm -hmm. salvation, and maybe there's some of that going on here. But we'll have to just make our own uh, suppositions because there's no supplementary material by the director himself. Yeah, which is a shame. I would be very curious to check it out. I know you directors out there are busy doing things like directing and being famous. How long does it really fit, take a co commentary? Like come two on. hours? Come on. Like you it's know, literally you could, two yeah, hours. To you, do you could easily, like, word vomit some opinions and have someone chop up the good bits yeah, and toss it in. Yeah, make it up. All right. Let's Maybe that's just me. Let's move Maybe along. I'm just so bored that I feel like these guys should have this time yes. to do it. <laughs> let's move into one of the more curious, interesting products to come yes. out earlier this year, and that is Rectify. Mm -hmm. This is a series that uh, was on Sundance Channel, I believe. Okay. It is created by Ray McKinnon, um, but is produced by Mark Johnson and Melissa Bernstein, okay. who are executive producers on Breaking Bad. Uh huh. Um, very, curious. very. Um, popular initial run. It was much like the original season Breaking Bad where there's only six episodes. Okay. It's about a um, a man who's sentenced to, I believe, uh, death row and he serves 19 years before DNA evidence gets him out. So the whole slogan of the show, which I actually think is pretty clever, is sentenced to die, condemned to live. <laughs> so he gets out and he has to sort of put together his life afterwards mm -hmm. and figure out, you know, everything that's going on. It's very interesting. interesting idea. See, this should have been directed by Chang Wu Park, because if you've ever seen yeah. Old Boy, then... So, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, this is definitely Old Parallel. <laughs> and, you know, it probably is some of the more interesting um, features that have come out. Mm. It's got, you know, Sundance on the set, which is sort of oil profile of everything gone. It's got inside job behind the scenes. It's got inside episode with Ray McKinnon, the creator of it. So you got much more of that sort of dialogue with the filmmakers. That which is good. I'm not surprised coming from Sundance Channel yeah. that there would be a little bit more behind the scenes stuff, but it's good to know that they're at least paying attention yeah. to that and putting it in their release. But it's got uh, very positive reviews thus far. It's got very good pedigree with, hmm. you know, people from Breaking Bad working on it and stuff. Nice. And you know, I think it, things are looking up for yeah. it going forward for I'll sure. Check it out. I, I mean, I'm unfortunately disappointed that it's only available on DVD at this point. I mean, you might be able to get the HD version online, hmm. but you know, you're not getting special features, yeah. obviously. But I, I'm always perplexed that in this day and age when things are released purely on DVD. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. maybe maybe I don't think there's enough money to be made with the Blu-ray release. Yeah. But maybe they're just like, we're a TV show. Let's just straight to DVD. Not worry about it. I know. It's Maybe just, there just wasn't enough money to put into a Blu-ray version. Maybe. Know. Who Maybe. knows? Uh, Who knows? We're going to go way back. Yes. I think uh, 90 years, in yeah. fact, back and mm -hmm. talk about the Criterion release of Safety Last. Mm -hmm. This is from Harold Lloyd, who... If you don't know much about him, he was sort of... You look him up, first off. Sure, look him up. <laughs> He's in that same genre as... Um, Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton and the sort of silent era stars. Yes. He's very much in that same sort of group. I guess you would say he's sort of the forgotten one of the group. Definitely. I mean, not 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 that he's not popular or well known. But, but his, the other his legacy two, did not last in the same kind of long t longevity, I would say, that yes. like Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin have. But you know, he was um he was known for doing sort of uh stunts and outrageous uh I guess outrageous stunts is yeah. probably the best way to describe yeah. it. So that much were actually that actually like stunts rather than yeah. Faked. I mean, he yeah. actually lost two fingers right. performing a stunt, so like he had to wear a prosthetic glove to cover it up. Mm -hmm. And Safety Last is one of the sort of most iconic yes. images of cinema, where he's hanging off of yep. this clock. Every time you've seen that parody from The Great Mouse Detective, Hugo on, are all parodies or homage to that idea. The whole, the physical clock hands hanging on the outside. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's the story of a store clerk who's setting up a publicity stunt, and when his friend is unable, or circumstances are unable to have his friend do it. He has to do the climb himself. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's fu a fun premise. Yeah. It's got a ton of special features on the Criterion release. You know, you uh, got Criterion. Um, the musical score restored um, <sighs> by composer yes. Carl Davis in 1989. I love when they do that with Silent Mill yeah. movies. Uh, you got an audio commentary from Leonard Moulton and Harold Lloyd archivist wow. Richard Correll. You've got uh, a documentary. 
a 104 minute documentary Ooh. called Harold Lloyd, the third genus referencing Buster Keaton yeah. and Charlie Chaplin. Very cool. Which was done from 1989. And then you have three restored shorts of Harold Lloyd, which he was prolific. Like, you know, I, I forget, there's somebody talking about, you know, he might not have been as successful in individual pictures as Charlie yes. Chaplin, but he did so many more that the volume of it was more successful mm -hmm. than Charlie Chaplin's Definitely. overall sort of yeah. success. So, I mean, very interesting. Uh, a lot of people don't know about Harold Lloyd compared to Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin. So, and, and it's so interesting to look back at. I mean, you got to look back at those guys that did those crazy stunts. Yeah. You know, and they, there's a reason that uh, they were willing to do all this, and that was just for the sake of their career. And, they you know, really he, just, he sacrificed. I mean, yeah. losing two fingers in the process, but you know. That's why it's on Criterion. Yep. It's very cool. Um, but that's it for this week. Uh, join us for our next episode when we talk Pixar in honor of the release of Monsters University. Yeah. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffin. That's MacGuff.in. Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast. Facebook.com slash MacGuffin Podcast. Phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv. Miro. Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some stickers. Leave some stars on iTunes and some mm -hmm. thumbs on YouTube, and we'll comment at you. Yeah, hit us back. We'll hit you. And uh, see you next time. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. Because I've got space game, and it feels alright.